Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about excretion of substances, or more specifically, kind of waste materials. So, let's begin, first of all, by saying what the point of excretion is. Ultimately, it's another way in which the environment of cells is controlled. In the topic of homeostasis, you talk about the maintenance of a constant internal environment, and you do about osmoregulation, thermoregulation, controlling blood sugar level. But excretion is also part of that. We're removing waste, but not specifically just waste in general. In fact, there's three things that we can define excretion as being. And in the IGCC specification, it refers to all three. So when we refer to excretion, what we're talking about is the removal. So number one is the removal of toxic substances. So that is part of excretion. Number two, excretion also refers to the removal of waste products of metabolism. So the removal of waste products of metabolism. And by metabolism, I'm referring to uh, all the chemical reactions that you have in the body. Metabolism really refers to all of those chemical reactions. And number three. So three key areas when we refer to excretion. So we've got removal of toxic substances, the removal of waste products of metabolism, but it's also the removal of substances in what's called excess. Now that simply means that we have too much of a substance for the body to handle. So you can see it isn't just so clearly defined as just removal of waste. There's three different elements to this word excretion. The removal of toxic substances, the removal of waste products of metabolism, and the removal of substances in excess. So there is a particular three mark question defining excretion and to get all three marks you need to refer to all three of these. Now just to say this is not the same as egestrin, the removal of faecal material, so undigested material, isn't really the same. It doesn't fit with these, this definition. We're not removing something that's toxic, it's not a waste product of metabolism as such, it's simply undigestible material and it's not substance in excess. So technically the release of faecal material from the body is not classed as excretion. So when we think about excretory organs, we don't refer to anything to do with the bowel, ultimately. And that's why in this diagram that we've got, we don't really have the bowel included. So let's just talk through what our main excretory organs are. So the first one, I'm going to highlight all of these on the diagram. The first one, it's quite a large one, is skin. Skin is our first one. So I'm just going to colour in a portion of the skin. I won't colour all of it, but I'm going to colour in or shade in all the regions that are relevant to the bits that I'm going to be writing down. So I'll just do a, I'll just do a little bit more just from the shoulder. So our first excretory organ that we're going to refer to There we go, is skin. Now, skin, when we think about what we're excreting, it's really sweat from the skin surface. So skin, what we're releasing is sweat from the surface. So there's our first key excretory organ to mention. We're losing sweat from the skin surface. The second key organ to mention, as you can guess, but I'm shading, are the lungs. Now, from the lungs, what we're doing is excreting toxic carbon dioxide and water vapour. Now, 
Notice I've said the word toxic because it is technically a toxic substance. Carbon dioxide is acidic. So what we're removing from the lungs is toxic. I've just put CO2, carbon dioxide, and water vapour. So there is our second main excretory organ we need to consider. Next, I'm going to colour in the liver. Now, the liver is this particular organ over to the right side of the body, because when we look at a picture, remember, we always presume that that person, if we're looking at, for example, is us. So this would be the right side of the body for them. So we've got here, positioned on this side of the body, is the liver. Now the liver ultimately works to remove excess amino acids that can't be stored. So we're going to remove excess amino acids. Now there's two ways we can remove amino excess amino acids. One is by what's called transamination where you change the amino acid to a more useful one, one that the body could make ultimately better use of and use for maybe the formation of a, a more useful protein. But the one that a lot of specifications refer to, lot, the process that is required, is one called deamination. So I'm just going to add that excess amino acids I put here by deamination, and I'll just go on to explain what we mean by that word. So in deamination, what we do is remove the nitrogen-containing part of the amino acid, and that would form ammonia. So we take away the nitrogen-containing part, we're left with ammonia, and that ammonia then gets converted into something called urea, and it's the kidneys which will help us excrete that. Now, it's a bit of off-spec information, but ultimately, if you take the nitrogen-containing part off the amino acid and form ammonia, the bit that's left, we refer to as what's called a keto acid. That's made along with ammonia, and that's actually used as energy for liver cells. But that's a little bit of extra information. So ultimately, if you remove the nitrogen-containing part of the amino acid, you get ammonia and a keto acid. Keto acid uses energy for liver cells. The ammonia gets converted into urea, which the kidneys will help us excrete. And that process is known as deamination. So that's one way we can remove excess amino acids in the liver. But the liver also helps us to break down the hormones in excess. So we've had excess amino acids by deamination. We can add a little information here. Hormones that are in excess. Toxins also, the liver will take care of. But also worn out red blood cells. The liver will help us break down those. And the liver also has another key role, something called assimilation. And it means taking in amino acids into the cells. As I said before, that we can remove the excess amino acids by deamination, but by transamination we can convert them into other ones. But this is about taking amino acids actually into the cells and converting them straight into protein. Basically to lower the level of amino acids that we have in the body. So that's called the simulation. We take the amino acids into the cells and we convert them into proteins. And for example, we could be thinking about things like plasma proteins. So large proteins found in the plasma, such as fibrinogen, and that's used for blood clotting, but also albumin, which is a big plasma protein that helps to maintain osmotic gradients. So there's a few roles of the liver as an excretory organ. So we get rid of excess amino acids, hormones in excess, toxins, one of red blood cells, and the assimilation of amino acids into cells to form proteins. And the final one that we need to mention are the kidneys. Let's just highlight the kidneys here. So we've got the left one in place. And here's the right one, just very rough shading, but this is just to show the location. Now the kidneys, our last key excretory organ that we're going to refer to. So the kidneys, 
its kidneys would excrete toxins, again, like urea, but also excess water and salt. So again, it fits very much with our definition. So we're going to get rid of urea. Also excess water and salt. Now one key thing to say is that water intake, so the amount of water that we put into our bodies, the temperature that we are, and exercise will all affect the total level of water and salts and sugar or glucose that we have in the body. So ultimately that is going to affect the volume and the concentration of urine that we actually produce. So for example, if we're drinking lots, if our water intake is very, very high, then clearly our water level in the body will raise, and so the volume of urine that we produce will be a lot greater. It will be a lot less concentrated, but much more dilute, because the body will try and remove that excess water that we've taken in. And again, that fits with our definition, because we've said the kidneys excrete toxins like urea, but also any water that is in excess. Now, just to finish up, I just want to refer to an exam question that I've seen that's worth uh, eight marks. And the question simply says this. I'm just going to read you this exam particular question. It says, the lungs and the kidneys are excretory organs of the human body. Define the term excretion, three marks. So straight away there, we've got, from our definition, one, two, three marks right there. The second part says state an excretory product that is passed out of the lungs, or state two excretory products rather. So we've got lungs, we've got CO2, water vapour, there's our two marks there. And for a final three, outline the role of the liver in excretion. Three marks. And we can see there's plenty there about the liver. We've got the removal of excess amino acids, hormones and excess toxins, one out blood cells, so we've got four potential marks there. So you can see questions that you get on excretion are really straightforward. It's just essentially just relaying this particular information that I've discussed about in this video. Okay, hope all that helps.